What's up guys and welcome back to In The Shop TV. Today we're all about this cross member. We're gonna try to get it installed, but first we gotta do a couple things to it. You know, today's both an exciting and a nerve wracking day at the same time because I think we've been deconstructing this car for so long that this has been kind of a drag, but today's kind of the first step in reconstructing it, if you will. So I'm excited about that. It's nerve wracking because, you know, the whole front of the car centers off of it. Your engine sits in it, your front suspension, and it really needs to be perfect. Just the geometry of it, getting it shimmed up and centered and totally lined up where it needs to be uh, has me a little bit nervous, but we'll tackle it together and I think we're gonna get it done. So I've got it sitting here on the welding bench and um, what we're gonna do first is these holes are for the lower control arm mounts and inside there's a spacer that gets welded in place. Also on the back here, there's a little gusset plate that gets welded onto the cross member and the lower control arm gets threaded through it. I don't wanna do that on the vehicle or on the frame once it's welded up, so we're gonna go ahead and Set the cross member here, get our lower control arms out, get our spacers uh, tacked in place, and then we'll start welding them in. Here's one of our lower control arms in the bag. I'm gonna go ahead and take this out of the bag. And if memory serves, I believe this is gonna be the front, or this is gonna be going on this side because this mount right here is gonna be for um, sway bar link. And then these tabs on the cross member are for our rack and pinion. So this one is gonna get mounted up on this side. So it appears I'm right. This is the front of the control arm and that is the front of the cross member. So it's in the right orientation. They did, however, ship this backwards though. This gusset goes on the back side of the cross member and this spacer gets welded in here. So I'm gonna take this bolt out and flip these around. But before I do that, I'm gonna take advantage of having these holes right here. They have to be enlarged to fit this bolt. I'm gonna go ahead and measure from one end of the hole to the other end of this hole. Since they're nice and clean, I'm gonna find the center mark of my cross member, which is really an important part in getting it sitting properly in the frame. All right, so we're clearly marked here in the center on both the front and the top. We're measuring from the inside of each um, control arm bolt hole to the center, puts us right here. Another mark that I need to go ahead and make is gonna to be to center up or find center from the top right here of the side of the cross member because our spring hats, or our top hats, get mounted onto the frame and they also need to be centered up in relation to the cross member itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and find center here and mark that. All right, so everything is clearly marked. Now it's time to open up our hole to 5 8 to do that. I'm gonna go ahead and use a step bit or a unit bit, whatever you wanna call it. And I'm gonna find 5 8 which is right here. And I'm gonna tape up right to this line so that I know not to go further than that. Okay, so this side is done, we're enlarged, we're ready to go. We can start welding our spacer in now, but while we have the unit bit all set up over here, we might as well go ahead and open up the other side. We gotta get a glove on because it's flinging little hot little bits of metal at me. take our spacer and make sure that we fit right here, which of course we do not, but I think we would. So it looks like about 30 seconds of an inch has to come off of the spacer. All right, more grinding. And here I thought I wasn't going to have to grind today. I was going to get out of it, but nope, no such luck.
Okay, so it fits really nice, but the holes inside here from drilling it out with the unit bit has um, some burrs on it. So it's kind of stopping it from going all the way to the hole. So I'm just gonna take this precision um, half round file and just smooth out those edges. All right, so I'm gonna slide our spacer in place and I think I'm gonna use the bolt to just kind of hold it temporarily where it needs to be. And I'm gonna go ahead and just um, get a tack on that spacer. So in here, I'm gonna put just a series of tacks as far as I can, because I can't obviously weld behind it, because I won't be able to fit the MIG gun in there. But um, a series of tacks, otherwise called stitch welding, is okay in this situation, because this is just a spacer to protect that bolt. It doesn't do anything structural. If you were gonna do a structural weld, you need a solid continuous bead um, in one shot. But these little bit, these tacks will be just fine to hold that in place. this up just a little bit to help me maybe get underneath there a little bit better. <laughs> Alright, so we are packed up pretty good and solid. We didn't go all the way down, but we don't have to. Nice, good, snug fit. Alright, that's exactly what I wanted. All right, so I'm getting ready to um, temporarily mount my lower control arm here with the bolt so I can start welding the gusset plate on. I might have been wrong in my first video about this. Um, I've, it does look like there is some kind of paint or coating on this. So um, I'm going to go ahead and have to just kind of grind off the edge right here where it's going to mount to the cross member so I can get a good weld. I'm just going to put this bolt in place to hold our spacer there, our gusset rather. I'm going to go ahead and get that tacked up. All right, so I've got our gusset tacked in place in three spots on this side. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and flip the cross member over and start tacking the back because when you, I don't know if you guys know this, but if you start welding on one side, the heat will actually pull the metal up and in. It'll start warping everything. So you gotta kinda, whenever you weld, you gotta kinda do one side. You know, that's why you see me when you go over here and then I moved over here and then you gotta kinda keep moving the heat around because it'll start, it'll just pull the metal on you. So it's like you're it back and forth, right? Just, you know, this side, now we're gonna do this side and back and forth until we get it welded in place. All right, so our control arm's on. It's a bit of a bear to get that bolt through there. The bushing's lining up and it's a real tight fit, but I'm pretty happy with that. It's a nice tight fit on the control arm. It does rotate. There's no metal on metal binding, so Fit up is good, weld is good. I'm happy. One side done. Now we gotta take it off again. All right, we are all disassembled. It's one side done. Let's get the other side going. That spacer is welded in there. Bolt is traveling nice and smooth. Good. All right guys, let me show you what I did. I got the cross member in, in place here. 
I've got our line. You're supposed to measure from the center of the spring perch 20 and 7 eighths to the frame. Draw your line up. Then remember we marked our cross member earlier so that it would line up with our mark, which we are. We did the same thing on the other side. Our frame is level front and back. Our frame is level side to side. We went ahead and marked the center line on the cross member. And what I did was I took this piece of tape, measured across the frame from both sides and found center there. And we're using a laser level so that we can come over here and make sure that we are dead center on both marks, which it looks like we have to come over this way just a tap. Okay guys, we are dead on centered up. We are dead on right here, dead on right there. Dead level this way, dead level that way. It's exactly, exactly where it needs to be. Now, the issue I'm gonna have is we have a little bit of gaps here, okay? If I would've welded the plates on the outside, it would've been too far in, and inside the channel where I welded those boxing plates were a little too far in that way. This side is a little bit closer, but there's still a gap. So, we gotta get some shims going and try not to disturb the geometry of what we have here. All right, so I cut a little piece of 1 8 shim put it right there in the back so that's filled up that space good just shot two little tacks in the corner to hold that shim in all right guys that side is all welded in um i apologize i was talking to the camera like an idiot the whole time and i did not realize that the batteries died so i didn't get to film any of welding that in other than you saw me tack welding it but that is all one piece now this side i did not get the top hat on yet but all the welds are done it's welded in so it's the next day and I've just got this second top plate tacked in and I'm going to go ahead and start welding it in full. Well, alright guys, we are all welded in. Looking good. I'm happy with how things came out. I was pretty nervous about it, but I gotta say, I, I really couldn't be happier with it. So I got some black spray paint on that side just to keep things rust proof. I'm gonna go ahead and spray paint this, call it a day. Alright guys, so our cross member and top hats are all welded in and I put a quick coat of flat black on to keep it from rusting and it looks really good. However, I told you guys I'd be honest with you from day one with this project. All my mistakes, all my pros and cons, I don't want to, you know, film this and say that, make it look like everything I do is perfect. It's not. No matter what, through all of my measurements and adjusting and checking and adjusting and checking and adjusting and checking, the laser level, all of that, somehow this is off slightly. Um, about a quarter, a little bit less than a quarter of an inch. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So if we measure from this side to the end of the frame, we get just about 24 inches. Come over here, measure from this top hat to the frame. It's about an eighth of an inch less than that. So we're off by an eighth of an inch. Now, I think it's probably fine. It's probably no big deal. Um, fortunately, these holes right here is for the bolts for the upper control arm to mount, and they're actually a little bit too tight, so they have to be opened up, which kind of might save me a little bit. So what I've done is I've kind of highlighted with silver pencil on the closer side of it to open that side up a little bit, and I've highlighted the back side of these slots 
to push that back a little bit further. So, you know, that will probably give me, you know, a 16 inch there and a 16th of an inch there, giving my eighth of an inch, I'll be equal. Another saving grace that we have here is our T-bolts that mount into those slots. When they go up into these control arm rods here, there's about, oh, somewhere between an eighth and a 16th inch um, of play. So that will help us out tremendously too. I think between that and then opening up these slots a little bit, I think we'll, we'll make up the difference of what we need. And I'll probably be fine, but I, I don't know guys, I'm not, I'm not perfect and this stuff happens. It might be from the heat that I put into this from welding. I could be, I don't know, I could just be a brain fart or something like that. I don't think an eighth of an inch is really a big deal. I know that they can you know, fix some of that with caster adjustments and everything. Meaning uh, when they do the alignment caster can kind of, you know, it has the axis of your wheel, they can pull it forward or, or pull it back, which does move the wheel within the wheel well a little bit. So I know there's, there's options um, as far as that's concerned. So it might work out, it might not work out. I don't know. You guys, if you know about this stuff, leave it in the comments. Let me know what you think. Am I screwed here with an eighth of an inch off? Is it no big deal? Tell me. Uh, I told you to film all my screw ups and that's one of them. It's a big one. So let me know what you think. Also, as you guys can see behind me, we've been kind of building out this man cave. Um, it's also gonna serve as my office for my business. And we're kind of getting the exterior just about done wrapped up now. You know, my wife came in the other day, she's like, are you filming this for the channel? I was like, no, I'm just, you know, the car stuff and everything. She's like, you, know, you should be filming this. So I created a little bit of a poll on YouTube to see what you guys wanna see. Do you wanna see more of this stuff? Do you wanna see me building this man cave out and all the projects that go on in the shop? Or do you only wanna see automotive content, content? Please leave it in the comments. Let me know what you guys wanna see. You're the audience, I wanna to cater to you guys, so let me know. There's your shot to have your voice heard. Anyway guys, thanks for watching this cross member build on my 55 Chevy truck. Hit that subscribe button if you wanna see this whole build going on to follow along with me. It's gonna be quite a process. Thanks for watching guys, I'll catch you on the next video.